Hi, everyone. My name is Taryn. Welcome back to another episode of the Man to Man Coverage Podcast with my good friend and co host, Mason. What's up, guys? And if you are watching us on YouTube, hello. But if you are not, then um, if you're on other platforms, iTunes, Spotify, welcome to the audio version of the podcast. You can find us on YouTube. Uh, you can search Man to Man Coverage Podcast. Or the channel this is on is Tanner C T A N N E R space capital C. We are super happy to finally have this on other platforms. It's excellent news. So hoping this thing grows and this is just another step of the way. So let us know your feedback. But Mason, how are you doing today? Doing pretty good, pretty good. That's good. We're now into kind of the off season decline if you will but with that being said um we still have some interesting topics to talk about because this past season was probably one of the most interesting nfl seasons with uh veteran players we saw a couple win a super bowl with some young rookies and especially the quarterbacks and that's going to be today's episode the rookie class um that we saw four of them take major action in terms of playing snaps and then um, others were on the bench, but still some stuff to talk about with those QBs as well. So we're going to be going in an order they were picked. So round one, pick one, the Cincinnati Bengals took Joe Burrow. And I was high on Joe Burrow coming out. I think most people were uh, fans of his. And I saw a bit of LSU games, a tiny amount. But what I saw there is he just looked very professional when he threw the football. I think each of um, the quarterbacks we saw um, have playing time. They each do something at a very high level, and I think Burrow is ball placement. If you watch his games um, this NFL season, especially the Titans, Eagles, and the Browns game, I feel like that Burrow's ball placement is just really on target. He's a very polished thrower in the um, short and medium areas of the field. His deep ball could be better. I think that's where there's some issues at. Um, But I think overall he looked really good. The um, injury sucks. But I do like his feature. He has, you know, T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd, Joe Mixon going forward. And if the Bengals go wide receiver, Kyle Pitts or offensive lineman, at their higher draft draft position, Burrow gets more help. Also, like this move in terms of the team, the Bengals. I feel like are a team that not that many people know about. They kind of suck the past couple of years. They had some competitive years with AJ Green and Andy Dalton, but I feel like Burrow just gives them this confidence to a high level. Uh, you see him in his interviews. He just kind of has this, for lack of a better word, swagger with him so i i really like joe burrow and uh mason you can uh, say your thoughts on him yeah no everything you said about joe burrow is pretty much what i agree with i think he he's a very accurate thrower um his arm strength's kind of in question at times it doesn't seem like he can get it uh downfield um most times or just like get it accurately there but i mean you know that can change with time and burrow seems like a hard worker i feel like he can definitely improve on that um what he did behind that Bengals offensive line this year was pretty incredible in my opinion. Like that, that offensive line was debatably not deba- debatably the worst offensive line in football this year. I mean, they couldn't block a toddler if they wanted to. Um, <laughs> they were, they were letting anyone in anyone and everyone in. And that's why Burrow sadly got hurt is because I mean, once you're taking that many hits and you're running for your life, pretty much every single uh, snap, it something's, bound to snap if that makes sense um but no burrow overall i think he i think he proved why he was the number one pick i really like him probably not the best quarterback um <clears throat> as we'll talk about other qbs later on but i feel like he he's definitely like a, a franchise quarterback and i liked what i saw from him yeah um there's other quarterbacks to talk about but i'll just say this now out of the four main ones we saw playing time i think burrow is by far the most polished I think others do things better than him, but I think overall, Burrow's the best. Um, a lot of people have done redrafting this NFL class, and they have the Bengals taking Herbert. 
I don't know. I will talk about Justin Herbert here in a couple minutes. I just really like Joe Burrow to this Bengals team. I think he's a great fit. And, you know, like you said, the offensive line was really the only issue he struggled. Um, I would put him around 14, 15, like kind of that Derek Carr level. I would say he's even better than Derek Carr. Um, They're very similar where they're good over the short medium game. They just struggle with the deep ball. But Burrow is a lot younger. So I would have him around that range, kind of like 12, 13-ish. I would have him higher than a good amount of quarterbacks just because of how much growth he showed. Yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty much, yeah, I agree with that. I think after, I mean, we really didn't, I mean, we saw like what half a season from him. So, I mean, but in that sample size, I think he did prove that he was like definitely not like a top 10 quarterback, but on the average to above average level as of now. And that that's pretty impressive for a guy who was thrown in day one. Um, But no, I feel like if this team just like actually gives him people that'll block for him and maybe another weapon or two, I think, the this uh the ceiling is very high for Burrow. Yeah, do you think he has a chance to be the best Bengals quarterback? Like Carson Palmer was really great and up there, but injuries happened to him. Um, I could see Burrow being the best Bengals QB. I think he's gonna have a very long career, at least ten years or so. Yeah, if, I mean, if the Bengals front office, you know, if they get him a, I mean, if Zach Taylor doesn't cut it, if they get him a competent coach and like. Good defense overall, just build around. I definitely do think because I feel like if the Bengals ever make a Super Bowl run, he'll be number one probably as a Bengals quarterback. Um, Boomer Esiason, he was a fantastic Bengals quarterback. Oh, yeah. Him and him and uh, Carson Palmer, I think he has to live up to. Andy Dolan's a great quarterback, but definitely not like the best Bengals quarterback. I think that's either Palmer or uh, uh, Boomer, but I feel like he definitely has a has a good, but like. I think he can honestly be the best, like when it's all said and done. Yeah, um, well said. So move on to the next quarterback, which was a couple picks later at pick number five, where the Miami Dolphins took Tua Tonga Vailoa. Yes, gotta correct. Um, <laughs> um, this is a very interesting quarterback to talk about because I think a lot of people had very high expectations for Tua to be this, like, fantastic Drew Brees player. People kept giving him that comparison coming out. I'm just like, I don't like that because that's setting him up. You know, he's not going to play like Drew Brees. Does he have similar traits? Yes, but I just didn't love that comparison. And I think Tua came out and a lot of Dolphins fans, you know, it's the tank for Tua thing. That was really big. A lot of people are like, this is the next Dan Marino and I thought Tua had a good rookie year. He wasn't fantastic, but he's going to grow into it. I think that we're in an NFL league where we see a lot of young quarterbacks, Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, reach these higher ceilings so quick and fast. Someone like Tua, who I think is going to take some time to grow, you know, people I think are kind of impatient with him. People are saying, oh, the Dolphins should trade to uh, I'm like, that's just uh, a terrible idea because I thought Tua did look good talking about the actual player. Um, I like his ability to get the ball out. We talked about, I really like Burrow's ball placement. I think Tua has a very good release. He's able to, I feel like, just kind of read the defense and that, get that ball where it should be very quickly. He was, I think, very efficient in the red zone. And he's also able to extend some plays. He's not going to be someone who runs around the backfield, but... I think that he still has some moments in him. And he had a lot of big games. I mean, you look at that Cardinals game. Uh, sorry, Mason, to bring that <laughs> up. But, um, you know, he went toe to toe of Kyle Murray and won. And you look at a game like the Rams game where that Dolphins defense played a lead. Tua was able to not turn the ball over. He kept the ball in the offense's hand and was able to give, you know, get the Dolphins a nice win. So I like Tua a lot. He has some good players in Miami. I think it's just going to uh, – time is just kind of the number one thing that he needs. Yeah, no, I think a lot of people are jumping ship way too early on Tua. The only way I would see the Dolphins moving on from Tua is if they had a chance to get Watson, when which in that case I would be on the Dolphins side because Watson is just a generational talent. You don't know if you're going to get that with Tua. But other than that, I don't think they should ever draft another guy at three – I think that'd be very stupid of them to do because, like, unlike uh, 
Josh Rosen Tua has a, some pretty good potential and actually showed flashes of being pretty solid. And you don't have like that Kyler Murray or Trevor Lawrence at number three guy. You kind of kind of have to like build. You have to work with Tua. Um, I feel like they, I feel like the coaches kind of managed his uh, situation pretty poorly as well because if the Dolphins are ever in a position where they're about to lose, they threw in Fitzpatrick instead of letting Tua kind of like ride the wave and feel like and know what it's like to play a full game and lose. Um, they decided to bench him multiple times and then give him the starting job the next week. It was, I just didn't like it. Um, I feel like if you, I feel like you either got to lead to a sip for a year or you have to let him play. You can't, you can't be doing both. I feel like that's what the Eagles did with Hertz and that really kind of hurt his development the first uh, 12 weeks through the year, but then the Eagles actually gave the keys to him. But with the Dolphins, um, Tua is like, okay, you're going to start this week, and then we're going to bench you, and then you're going to play this and that. I, I don't, I don't like that at all. That's not Tua's fault. Um, I think he has great qualities. I think he has a, he's a very accurate passer. Um, his mobility is a little scary. Can definitely can like move around, but he can't necessarily get you ten yards if you need ten yards kind of player. He's more of just like a he can move around in the pocket, not necessarily outside of the pocket, but um. His deep ball, like I said with Burrow, kind of a concern. Not not really there. He did. He showed uh, great flashes. Um, that Rams game, he played pretty solid. Didn't really have to do much. Cardinals game really did perform well. And then other games like against the Raiders didn't look too hot. But then again, he's a rookie, so I mean, you just only time will tell. Yeah. So I want to hit on a couple things you said. First of all, I really like what you said about the whole. Um, how he moves good inside the punk and not outside of it. I thought that was really well said. Um, I like his deep ball more than um, most people. Um, the, I will disagree, though. You said that the Dolphins mismanaged Tua because they were sitting and benching him. I disagree. First of all, Ryan Fitzpatrick had a pretty nice year, and I think that they were saying, okay, We've seen what we have for Fitzpatrick. He go Tua, and if Tua start to play bad, they put in Fitzpatrick. And I really like that because quarterback is a very rhythm paced game. You gotta, you know, get into rhythm with things. And if a quarterback, especially a rookie, continues to have bad mistakes, those are gonna grow. So I think he got benched in the Broncos and Raiders game, I believe. Um, I think even a bit of the last game with the Bills, but what I kind of do like about that is the fact that when he was starting to make mistakes, the Dolphins were able to pull him and say, you know, kind of give him a breather, give him a break. Don't let those bad mistakes continue. And Fitzpatrick played well. Now, if they didn't have Fitzpatrick, you know, some other backup who wasn't that good, I would disagree. I would agree with you, but I thought that the way the Dolphins handled it was well. I thought we saw enough um, from two and I thought that they managed his play style very well because you just don't, to establish bad uh, bad habits with quarterbacks. Yeah, no, I could definitely see why you said that. But, like, from the Dolphins' point of view, I feel like they're kind of – well, not kind of. They were trying to make playoffs. They are one game out. And then they kind of – they were they weren't winning with Tua, and they were winning with Fitzpatrick. And I thought it was just, like, a weird dynamic. And then Fitzpatrick was pretty bummed out that he didn't get to start anymore when he found out, which was sad. But, I mean, that was going to happen anyways. The thing that just like really surprised me the most was that the last two games, Fitzpatrick has one of the craziest comebacks all year, and then they don't play him next year for like a playing game to get in the playoffs. I don't know that was just a little weird. Yeah, that Raiders game was crazy. I, uh, to be honest, I love Ryan Fitzpatrick, but I thought him coming out and acting all mopey that that he got benched. I just really didn't like that. Yeah. You know, it's like, hey, you know. Can he be said? Yes, that's fine. That's a human emotion. But, you know, this is a big moment for this organization. I think the PR response, not PR, the, what is it called? The political correct response. Well, basically what I think he should have said is, hey, you know, um, I'm excited to see Tua playing, you know, stuff like that. I think acting sad doesn't really help the fans transition because a lot of people love Ren Fitzpatrick. He's great. He has that beard. Uh, he's a fun dude. So when he acts sad, people feed off of that energy wise. I just wish that he was, I think, a bit more smooth with that transition. But I do agree it was an interesting situation. 
Uh, I think Tua's going to have a good year two. I don't think he'll be fantastic, but I don't think he'll be terrible. I think he'll be somewhere in between. Um, so that's what I have to say about Tua. Um, and then we have the pick after that, which this is a play we've talked a lot about. But at pick, num- pick number six, the Chargers took Justin Herbert. And I mentioned several times on this show that I did not like this pick at all. I was down on it. I'm going to explain why. So the reason is, number one, I thought Herbert was very inconsistent at Oregon. I thought that he he had a lot of misses and bad plays. Number two, I thought that the Chargers signing Tyrod Taylor was a great decision. I'm like, oh, that's great. Tyrod can protect the ball. That's a really good decision. Number three, I thought the Chargers could have gone somewhere else. So I didn't like the Herbert pick. But he comes out, and he has to start week two due to a really awful injury that happened to Tyrod Terrell. His lung got punctured. Yes, his lung got punctured. The fact that he survived that is fantastic because that sounds like something that's devastating, but he survived, which is fantastic. Prayers up to him. Uh, that he's doing well. But Herbert has to start week two, gets, you know, right before kickoff against the Chiefs with Patrick Mahomes, a team that won the Super Bowl the previous year. And Herbert makes it close. And really, from that game onward, I thought Herbert was fantastic. Um, His deep ball is definitely the trait that I think he's the best at. We've talked about two and Burrow that they're – yeah, two and Burrow that their deep ball is down here. Herbert's deep ball is fantastic. It's one of the best. And not only can, oh, he throws the ball, you know, for a lot of yards, it's very accurately placed downfield. Also love the confidence. He kind of has that natural Los Angeles, California vibe. I think just stepping into that role and taking action, you want want to go out there and win, that is really crucial. Um, And I thought he had a lot of fantastic plays. A lot of people are comparing Josh Allen to Aaron Rodgers, but I don't think that Justin Herbert, I see a lot of Aaron Rodgers. I think that they both have some more deep balls, the way they move, they move around, and I think sometime in his career, Justin Herbert will be a Super Bowl champion. Yeah, no, <clears throat> Chargers definitely got a big steal in this draft, even though he was picks uh, six. I think he's still one of the biggest steals. Um, this dude is a phenomenal player. You can, his deep ball is already one of the best as a rookie, one of the best in the league, not just out of all rookies. And what's crazy is this guy's like, what, six, four massive. And he's debatably the, probably the best mobile quarterback from the first, uh, three we've talked about. Cause he, he had a lot of plays, um, in crunch time and overall the season where he was down in the red zone, made a couple of crazy jukes and plays and, and managed to score a touchdown and overall is like he's kind of like a big Ben in the sense where like it's very hard to take Ooh, him down because he's oh. so hard to tackle because of how big he is so that's kind of like com- like what I compare him to kind of he's like a mix of big Ben and like just like a strong arm quarterback like a prototypical strong arm quarterback um he made some pretty good reads throughout the year the only bad game I can really remember was the uh, Patriots game where they just got absolutely destroyed <laughs> as a whole team um his coach wasn't even that fantastic this year hence why he got fired um really couldn't close out games but um him mike williams keenan allen hunter henry that could be that that tree or that uh yeah that trio of receivers plus hunter henry could be very deadly for years to come yeah i like what you said i pulled up his numbers you know he had 31 touchdowns and 10 picks the fact that he had 10 interceptions only 10 is really fantastic, Dad. He's a rookie throwing deep. I think these first three quarterbacks we talked about, all three of them, didn't turn the ball over a lot, which is really good for young players. I love that Big Ben comp. I see like a Rodgers, Big Ben mix. Um, I think Herbert's release is a bit faster than someone like Big Ben, but the AFC West is going to be fun. Um, you know, you have – Mahomes, you have the Raiders offensive pieces along with Denver. We'll see who quarterbacks there. Then you have, you know, Herbert and the Chargers. It's going to be great. And I'm happy for this as well because, you know, the Chiefs are nice, but it's nice to see someone 
else who I think will give them competition. I think these Chargers Chiefs games are not going to be an easy win for Kansas City. And I could see that being a big rivalry in the AFC West because I feel like in the past couple of years, all the rivalries have happened like the NFC West, the AFC North, the NFC East, the NFC South. Not really any big wins in the AFC West. So I think it's just really brings a lot of energy into that division. Um, do you see Herbert having an MVP-like season next year? Because I feel like he could have one. Um, I could definitely see it maybe not – if not next year, I definitely think year three he could just, like, really burst on the scene. Year two I'm a little hesitant just because I um he's learning a new offense, which is, like, you know, a lot of, like, so like Mahomes and uh, – what's his face? Lamar, you know, they, they learned – um the playbook for two years straight which is really why they um burst it on the scene in my opinion because the more you know the playbook the better you're going to be overall um so herbert having to learn a new playbook is going to be a little tricky so i don't think he'll be i think he'll be a fan i think he'll be a pro bowler next year possibly an all pro but i think his real mvp caliber season will probably be year three or four when he's like got a good grip on the playbook i could see that i could also see next season kind of having what happened with Baker Mayfield, where Baker had an excellent rookie year and then dipped his sophomore year. Herbert's a very aggressive player with his decisions. We mentioned his deep ball. I could see that resulting in some interceptions, but in him bouncing back year three. So I would go on to the fourth quarterback who played. (laughs) Um, This is an interesting one, as it was the man who put Carson Wentz on the bench, Jalen Hurts who was taken by the Eagles in round two. Um, Mason, I have a lot to say, so I'll let you uh, give your thoughts on Hurts. I know you like him, um, so I'll let you go first. Um, yeah, I've been a big Jalen Hurts fan ever since he was a freshman at Alabama just because he's just like a really fun player to watch, and like Alabama finally had a good quarterback, but then he ultimately transferred because of the Tua. But, um and then watching him at Oklahoma, uh, his last college year, fantastic Heisman finalist. Um, and then this year, um, he had a terrible, terrible coaching staff around him, and he still put up some great plays. Like that, that entire um, Cardinals game, fantastic. Most of the Saints game, besides the like fumble that he had at the end, fantastic. Um, Cowboys game, I feel like he played pretty solid. He had that beautiful deep ball to. Uh, Deshaun Jackson that really just like kind of made the game really fun to watch. And then uh, the last game he got benched randomly because his coach wanted to openly tank. And then even the players got mad about it. And then I I thought that was messed up, but like overall, I think he's really, really good. Um, He's easily the most mobile quarterback from this class uh, as of now, Um, his ability to like extend the play, like how we said uh, Tua can do it in the pocket. Uh, Herbert can, or not, excuse me, Hertz can do it in and out of the pocket and get you 10 plus yards if you need it for a first down. Um, I think his deep ball is extremely like underrated because like some of the, some of those passes he had against the Cardinals and the Cowboys this year were like just fantastic deep balls. Um, and he really was doing it with not much talent because, you know, Eagles fans are always wanting receiver. Um, Miles Sanders even kind of a took of a dip this year, which kind of shocked me. Um, but yeah, overall, I really liked his play. I think the Eagles should. I think they should go with Hurts. I don't. I think the Wentz experiment completely over. I feel like that relationship's ruined, hence why they're he's on the trade block. But I think Hurts. I think you give him a year or two to like see what he can do when he's the starter for all sixteen games, and I think he's going to be fantastic next year. Yeah. Um. Well, so I'll jump off of that. So I liked Hurts coming into this draft or uh, this past draft season. And I was like, okay, I like him. I like his tools and assets. People kind of compared him to Dak Prescott. I saw him as a more mobile, less accurate version of Dak Prescott. I actually had him mocked in round two or three to the Panthers because I thought he could learn behind Teddy. Um, I really like that. So draft day comes around. Eagles have a disappointing round one. Okay, whatever. Round two comes the next day, and they take Jalen Hurts. I'm just being shocked, like, what? And I hated the pick. I have a video on my channel um, just saying I really disliked it. And things were looking that way for the first couple of games Hurts played. He was used really badly, and Wentz was missing stuff. And it's just like, if we had wide receivers, that would help. 
Hurts then gets to start with the Packers game, which I thought was the right time because Wentz had some decent games earlier, like the Steelers-Ravens game, Niners game, he was decent. Uh, But then Carson Wentz in the Giants-Browns-Seahawks-Packers game was miserable. Some of the worst quarterback play I've seen, or at least up there. So Hertz comes in, finishes the Packers game, and he has a one touchdown. He's like moving in the pocket and throws on the run. Beautiful touchdown pass. Has a pick. Oh, well. He then starts and beats the Saints. Very impressive. That New Orleans defense was very good. Um, Mason talked about his ability to run. And, yes, he's fantastic out of pocket. He's very patient. You look at running quarterbacks, each of them do something different. He's very patient, but he runs in stride really well. It it reminds me of a mix of Russell Wilson and Deshaun Watson. And I thought that he also has good movement inside the pocket. I was watching some um, of his plays against the Cardinals before recording this, and it was really great. So good win against the Saints. Then he goes in Arizona. Duels it out with Cal Murray. Three touchdowns, and all three of those touchdowns were really great. They were fantastic. I think that he had really good red zone accuracy. Um, him and Joe Burrow might be some of the more um, – I think those two are the more accurate red zone quarterbacks. I think Burrow more than Hurts, but Hurts, if you need a touchdown, he can give it to you. He then has the Cowboys game. That Deshaun Jackson touchdown was fantastic. That gave me classic Eagles vibes. I play the Eagles fight song, the fly, Eagles fly. The two picks, oh, well, but that's going to happen. And in the Washington game, I thought he had like that nice one rushing touchdown and just that game happened. But besides that, I was really impressed with him. I think overall he um, showed a lot of great things you want in a quarterback. And I think it's time to build around him. Um, I really love how professional he is. He has a great maturity about him. And this was a very stressful position, so I like Hurts a lot. Um, Mason, if you don't have anything else to say, we'll move on to some of the other quarterbacks. But that's what I have to say about uh, Jalen Hurts. Um, one last thing to touch up on Hurts. Uh, if you guys don't really know anything, like kind of like about him as a teammate, this he's like one of the best teammates you'll ever have. This dude is such a such a like humble guy. Um, when he was at Alabama and like Tua took over. Um, during the national championship game, then uh, the next year he took over as a starter. Hertz stayed at Alabama to like help Tua, and he wanted to compete against Tua. He didn't want to run away from the competition. And when Tua took his uh, spot, he supported Tua like crazy. Um, he's this guy just took his uh, starting job, and he literally just supported him. And in college, it's very different because you only have a couple of years to prove yourself for the NFL. Um, and Hertz was overall just super humble about it. Um, then after the national championship game where Tua won, Hertz was just like, he wasn't sad or mad about it. He was just so happy Tua got it done. Like, he's just like a perfect guy that you want in your locker room. Yeah, I know what the heck is going on with Carson Wentz, but there's <laughs> something going on with him, I think, in the locker room. Don't know what it is, and I don't want to make theories up, but I will say this, that Hertz, I think, has that locker room presence. I really love Jalen Hertz. If the Eagles take a quarterback this draft class at pick six, anyways, <laughs> we'll move on. Uh, I just won't be happy. So let's talk about some of the other quarterbacks. I want to start with Jordan Love with the Packers. I feel like so many people have talked about him. People really hate this. They're really down on this. What I will say is with Jordan Love is he is talented. He has the arm strength. He is someone who's just a very raw prospect. And I think him going into a team like Green Bay and learning is good. I think it just hurts that it was in the first round with the Packers and the Aaron Rodgers helped something we've touched on. I would have liked it the Packers saw more time, like saying that blowout win against the Titans they had. I would have liked to have seen some of love. And the fact that they he didn't see the field, even like five throws would have been nice. But um, I think that he could be a potential trade piece. But I like him more than most. I think that he has some – uh, big play potential. Um, now Jordan Love is a player. He's very talented, but the fit with him in Green Bay, I would like it if it was like a second round pick or something like that. I just don't. I just don't understand why they got him in the first round when they could have just gotten more help for Aaron Rodgers. And I also, I completely forgot to mention this when we talked about him earlier. 
um, in previous podcasts, but I hated how they handled his situation this year. You're having blowout wins. You have the number one seed locked up, and then you don't even put Jordan Love in the game. Like, I just don't understand. You don't even see what you have in your future replacement for Aaron Rodgers, um, who still has five great years left, maybe more. Um, and Jordan Love, like, I just – I hated how they had Tim Boyle as the backup, and then they just never played – Jordan Love, I just thought it was really weird. And it was like a it was like a weird, awkward tension too, because like Rogers was just like like after the draft, he's like, You guys really drafted a quarterback instead of getting me help. It's just like it was just so awkward. It was. It's a very interesting situation. People compared to Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers, but the difference was with that was it's like, okay, you can kind of see the decline in Brett Favre. Um, I think that Favre towards the tail end of his career had some more big plays with mistakes. Aaron Rodgers is different. Um but yeah I, I think it's just awkward. But I like him as a quarterback more. Um so anyways uh another quarterback we're talking about is Jacob Eason with the Colts. Don't know that much about Eason but I do know he's a very strong armed parket passer. And if the Colts don't get like a Carson Wentz or someone I think actually trying Easton out as a starter would be good. Um, he he was under Philip Rivers, and Rivers is an excellent deep ball thrower. Thrower, he's a good veteran. Now that Rivers is retired, if Easton got the uh, job as starting quarterback, it wouldn't anger me. I think that he's just kind of your typical pocket passer, can't really move, can just kind of go deep. I think that he's Justin Herbert without the legs and a bit more raw. Um, but I like Eason. Uh, we'll see where he goes, but I definitely think he should at least be considered because I think he has some good traits. And then, um, the last quarterback really of note we'll talk about is Jake from for the bills. I love this dude coming out. I wanted him so bad to go to the Colts in round two, but he went to the bills. I like that. I think he's a great teammate and the bills were an excellent team. Speaking of Jake from, we're trying to get him on this show. Nothing, you know, at all yet from him, but uh, trying to work on that. But anyways, that's what I have to say about the two, I guess you could say, Ricky Jake quarterbacks. Um, now, both of these guys, they they definitely they didn't even see the field this year, so it's really hard to judge them. But Eason, uh, just from college, he had a really strong arm. Not Wasn't really sold on him uh, coming into the draft just because he's still pretty raw. Um, really has a lot of skills to develop. Pretty much the only thing going for him is a deep ball, but that's like kind of like a good thing to have. A lot of quarterbacks don't have that, so to have that's a very um, great trait. I wouldn't mind him seeing um, if like the Colts can't pull off a Wentz trade or they don't draft someone. I think Easton starting would be really cool to see because it's kind of hard to like do really bad against that with that O-line because you have all the time in the world to throw. So I feel like um, – he could be decent. Maybe you never know. I mean, sometimes players come out of the woodworks and they just uh, fascinate you. And if he doesn't perform well, then um, he still can probably be a quality backup. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. And then same with Jake from um, sucks for him because he really probably will never have a situation in Buffalo where he is the starter because of Josh Allen. Um, maybe it's a thing where like from, you know, sits behind, Allen and then a team wants to take a shot on him and then he goes to a new team and performs well I think that's how his career could unfold or maybe he's just a career backup which is nothing wrong with because you know the Ryan Fitzpatrick's they go to all these different teams and they still perform well I could see from being a, a guy like that I think he's a very pure pocket passer and I think he's actually really solid when it comes to like the short and medium game um, but one other guy I do want to mention is my guy uh, Kendall Hilt Hinton the Broncos receiver turned quarterback rookie. Yes. I, he's kind of a meme, but like, I'm I'm not even gonna like meme around. Like that dude to do what he did is like actually phenomenal because he didn't play good at all. But like, to learn a playbook and to play quarterback in an NFL game is just like amazing to see. Um, didn't turn out the way he wanted to, but he made history, and I think that was really cool to see this year. Yeah, he po- the Broncos posted something with Kendall Hilton. It's like there was a game today. That's the score, but I was just so proud of him. And that just got me choked up emotionally because that's what football's about, that underdog. And that was cool to see. Uh, going back to Jacob Eason real quick, I'm kind of giving Jameis Winston vibes. 
less mobile, but I feel like Easton can either like have four touchdowns in a game or have like three picks. So he's very <laughs> up in the air. But the Colts offensive line and Frank Reich, I feel like could do some good things. And then Jake Fromm reminds me a bit of Derek Carr. Um, I just really like Fromm as a person. I feel like he could be someone who gets a start. But everyone, um, that will do it for this episode of the Man to Man uh coverage podcast. Before we leave. I do want to just say uh, rest in peace to uh, Chris Wessling. He was someone on the Around the NFL podcast. It's a big uh, NFL podcast. I listened to it here and there, but he passed away due to the cancer, which was really sad. And also Vincent Jackson, former Chargers and Bucks wide receiver, passed away unexpectedly at age 38. So uh, just really sad um, news. But I guess on a better note, the Man to Man College podcast will gain on other platforms. Excited to grow. And until then, I'll see y'all next time. Take care.